Hey, so I've been working on a character customization tool, and I thought I'd share some of the things I've learned while making it. And just demo it here. So, um, basically, just it's just a T-shirt. Um, it, loads, it loads in a decal that projects onto the this mannequin here. Um, I've got uh, buttons here on the left and on the right, which cycles through a bunch of different images, and it has a post-process outline here to sort of draw attention for the user into the space to click on it. Uh, I've also got a custom cursor icon as well. Um, so if I click on here, I load in the Merry Christmas <laughs> and Happy New Fear image onto the onto the character. I can also go back again. Hence the it's, it's like an image carousel that you typically would see on the web. So I, I come from a web background, so um, yeah, I, I just haven't seen many videos on YouTube or any videos on YouTube that show how to do this. So I thought I'd, I'd share. So I can carry on through all the way to the end. Uh, this is the last one. And when the last image is loaded in, I can't, can't keep clicking. I can keep going back, I can click all the way back again. And again, the same thing with the first image, I can load it in there. So um, there's, there's other ways to do this as well. I could have also just loaded in a back arrow uh, button or, or some sort of animation to say this is the end of the end of the line, but uh, I just decided to pick the last image and throw it onto here. I'll show how that's done in a sec. So I've also got a widget UI here, uh, which just pops the camera up um, a few points and lets me rotate around the hat. Again, the hat is clickable. It uh, loads in a random color. I could have also had it so that when I clicked on this button here, a bunch of hat selections popped out to, ch to you know pick and choose specific icons, but uh, I just thought I'd do something slightly different, and uh, and that's it. That's pretty much it. I'll just go over the blueprints and how how they how some of the stuff was put together. Okay, so the, the first one is the image slider. So I've got, I've got a left plane here, a right plane here. There's also planes behind it, which really don't do anything. They just it's more to help with the aesthetic in terms of how, how things are rendered on the screen, just to help to improve the way it looks. Um, this is due to the transparency in some of the images, um, but you, could, you can pretty much ignore that. And then there's a, the, the decal, or the decal, as I like to call them, um, which has a default material set to it as well. And then in the event graph here, I've got the custom blueprints, which update everything. So the first one is rotate t-shirt buttons towards the camera. So that is the billboard effect that you see here. That's pretty common, uh, pretty pretty well known effect. So I won't go into it in, in, in depth, but there's the uh, the nodes for anyone who's interested. Player camera manager, active location, active location, look at rotation, set to 90, and plug it into the Z axis so that only it only turns along the, the Z axis. Pretty straightforward stuff. Um, the next one is T-shirt. Uh, when you click on the left button or the right button, which is the left button here, and that's the right button there, it updates the images. Um, there's some logic here to prevent the user from decrementing the array uh, below minus one. And, uh, and also when you're clicking right to stop the user from incrementing above the uh, material list array, which is this one here. So the material materials array contains a bunch of materials. This this is um, dynamic. This is a you can you can just add in uh, the only manual thing that you need to do or hard coded thing that you need to do is add in an extra material here. Everything else is dynamic, so I could just add in uh, as many materials in here as I wanted to, and I wouldn't need to adjust any any anything in anything in the blueprints here at all. So the way that that works is if I go into here. There is a sequence which just fires off all these pins sequentially. Um, zero, one, two. The first. Okay, let me zoom out here. So these three blocks here are setting the materials for the left-hand side, the de the decal in the middle, and the material on the right, on the right plane. So the right plane, left plane, and the the decal. And then this block. Here and this block here is what handles the logic 
basically when, for when the user gets to the end of the array, end of the array, and and when the user clicks left, go all the way back down to the beginning to the zero array. So to make sure this is needed, to um, when the user just let it play. So when the user clicks on this here, this is effectively going to minus one. So we need some logic to to make sure that this does get displayed correctly, and that this gets displayed correctly, and that this gets displayed correctly, and the same thing counts for when you get to the end as well. So that's the okay. So just to set the material, it's pretty straightforward. You get the materials array, uh, grab the index from the array position, and this is coming in from the event graph. So the array position is over here. So it's coming in from here. It's being decremented here. So on the first one, it's going to be minus minus one. Um, so let's go over here. So we're getting the array position here, which increments, decrements whenever the user clicks on the left or the right planes, and sets the material. Pretty straightforward. We know that, um, uh, yeah, the materials list set, yeah, it sets it here, it's set here. Then the middle decal, decal t-shirt uh, is exactly the same thing. Just, it's just set decal material instead of set material. And then the set right play material is just set material. Again, same thing. The only difference is that we need to increment the array position because what's coming in here needs, needs to be updated by one and it needs to be increased by one to get the next material in the list. So increase by one, get the next material, increase by one, get the next material. That's it. So for the left plane to, uh, so for this left plane, when we get all the way back to the beginning again, or array zero, uh, or in this case, negative one, because when we get to zero, it's uh, not trying to display zero, we're, trying to, we're just on zero. So the next one displayed is actually one in the middle in the t-shirt. So we have some logic here. Uh, we have a branch to check, is the array index uh, at negative one? And then if it is, then we set the decal material and set the default material for the left and the right to be the same, basically. And the same thing is happening here, except it's the last index. So we're checking the last index. Um, the, yeah, we're also doing a negative one here, which is a fairly common thing in web arrays where you have to subtract one sometimes, uh, depending on the operation or the programming language that you're using. But uh, if this is a bit confusing, just do a, oh, what is it? Get a length. Yeah, just grab the length for the, for the materials array, the last index for the materials array, and the array index. And if you print uh, all three of these, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, it's just one of those things you have to debug for. Uh, or the other thing you can do is you can grab an array index and watch the value. You can see the value updating to three, four, five, etc., etc., etc. And that's it. Pretty straightforward. But you can use this to cycle through an array of materials, an array of um, static meshes, uh, pretty much anything. It's quite a handy uh, thing to know about if you don't know how to do it. I think, anyway, I think it's pretty cool. It's a very common web web thing to do. Um, next thing, let's see what we've got here, ah, is the player. Um, we're going to the, this is the camera, this is the orbit camera. So if I go into the event graph first, let's have a look here. Okay, so on event tick, um, there's a gate here to handle the middle mouse opening and closing. If you're not using it, obviously you don't want to be, you don't want to carry on updating the camera angle. Um, the orbit camera is just this. Spring arm goes into world transform, break the transform out, get the rotation, get the wire pitch, um, and then add it together while using a clamp and then make your rotator and set the world rotation. So um, you get the mouse value with get mouse Y, get mouse X, and then the speed obviously can be adjusted by multiplying it here, these two. Um, let's see. Yeah, so we've got the spring arm here with the cine camera and just a few you know basic settings. Um, nothing extraordinary. The next one, uh, so this is the mannequin. 
It's just a body with trousers, shirt, and shoes all separated out. Uh, I did it this way because I was planning on swapping out the trousers and the shoes, uh, the static meshes, mm. dynamically, um, which I may or may not do. We'll, we'll see. But um, there's nothing in the scripts for that. There's nothing interesting. And then the last thing is the random color generator for random material selector for the hat, which is pretty straightforward. Just uses a multi-gate on, on touch on the hat, uh, and then it uses a multi-gate with the static mesh hat to set the material. Um, and I'm also turning off the ability for it to, for the static mesh to render the post process so that we disable the the outline, the blue outline that pops up there. And that's that for the random hat. And then the only other things, um, no, nothing too interesting really, just if you've got a, a, a texture that's a particular color and you want to darken it, you can use the three point levels and just grab a um, a, a, a scalar value, scalar value, a, just grab, grab an integer value and then pump it into the new white value in the middle point here. And that will just darken everything up. Um, Post-process volume. Um, so I, I've grabbed this shader from a Matt, Matt Asplund uh, tutorial. There's a video on my, on my YouTube somewhere which uh, links to that, as well as this whole shader as well, which is on the Unreal um, forums. So you can go and just copy and paste it. It's much easier than having to go through and uh, type out every single one. <laughs> Um, there it is. If you, uh, if anyone wants to have a look at it, be my guest. But uh, I would just go and find the link to download the uh, shader itself, rather than going through it all. The math is pretty. Yeah, I spent a, I spent a good good hour or two just uh, debugging this stuff to try and figure it out. Well, that's the my uh, little clothing configurator thing I'm working on. Um, and I hope that the carousel in particular thing, and the way of implementing your arrays. Hopefully that was useful. Um, yeah, cheers.